Hey, it's Dave from Beyond Headwaters. I'm, I'm walking around and you know, you never know who you bump into. And guess what? You, you can't avoid this guy. Boom, bang. Here is Mr. Chad himself. You run into me, you're going to bounce off, though. You know what I mean? That's the only thing. That's what happened. That's what happened. Some yeah. people are built for speed, I'm built for comfort. You know what I'm saying? There's a, so. there's a lot of excitement about this Bonafide, the new kayak. And um, Chad is so gracious to chat with us about it. He's going to introduce it to us and uh, give us a quick overview. So you want me to do the overview or do you want to ask me questions and go? I can no, do it either way. Do the overview. All right, so the biggest thing about this boat is it is both bow mount and stern mount ready. It's got plenty of volume. Standing deck in the front or cargo compartment. Standing deck in the back or what we like to refer to as the upper deck. Pops up nice and easy. Got a couple of like old school G hood latches. Pop it up. You've got battery storage. You can convert it to a live well because it does have scuppers in it. One of the biggest questions is, is this deck something you can stand on as a big dude? I can tell you that it's not only big dude approved, it's bigger dude than me approved because it's reinforced all the way around. Pretty much if you're able to use this boat, you can stand on this deck. Not going to have any issues. Big open cockpit. The cockpit actually goes all the way through. All right, so you can scoot your seat forward and aft. Another thing about this deck is you can pop this deck off, and like you see on the other boat behind me, you can add a second seat. So you can use it as a true tandem, and it's a tandem that's got enough volume. If you want to take a kid and you don't want to spend the money on a second seat, you can actually just attach a stadium seat to this little thing here and have the kid facing you. And I'll be honest with you, unless the kid's big enough to fish by themselves, by and large, you don't want to be behind them because nope. you're in the danger zone of getting hooked in the face, the neck, the eyeball, and then now you've got a kid and you've got a hook and it just doesn't make for a good day. So I'm a bigger fan of having the kid facing you anyway and then you just manage the boat position. Again, one of the cool things about the boat is this Millennium Seat has been made popular by New Canoe, by Native, the you know the sister brand here at Big Adventures, and now it comes into the Bonafide family. Super wide, super comfortable. It's easy to adjust. It's got the 360 swivel option. Makes it great for getting in and out of the boat. You can fish side straddle if you want to. During testing, I turned this boat sideways, put my feet on the gunnels, and with all my weight on one gunnel, I didn't even feel unsecure. To flip this boat, because we were trying to, I couldn't flip it by grabbing the handle and doing the standard thing. I couldn't grab the side of the seat and flip it. I pretty much had to turn the seat sideways, put my feet over the boat, grab the back of the seat, and just keep throwing my head over until I finally got it to flip over. And the only reason I bring that up is this boat on social media and in photos looks like it's so massive that it's hard to handle. But literally, I just popped up under the boat, grabbed the handles right here, these two handles, and actually flipped it right back over. And it was way easier uh, than I thought it was. All over the boat, you'll notice that there's mount options everywhere. So one of the most popular mounting solutions in kayak fishing is this lock and load vase from the folks at Yak Attack. And that's one mounted, if you look kind of right here or up at the front, everywhere you see that little X is a place that you can put one of those lock and load bases. We got two here, one on each side here, one on each side there, and then one's in the back. So you can even set up the Yak Attack rod stagers on the side. And the cool thing about this boat is it's almost like a blank canvas. It comes with everything you really need to go fishing, but you can decide how many black packs you put in it. Do you put in a stern motor? Do you put a bow mount? Do you put both? And then if you want to come around and kind of look at the back of it, I hate to say it this way, but in this industry, this is one of those boats where babies got back, okay? As you notice how it comes down, it actually widens out in the back. And if you're familiar with like wrestling or mixed martial arts and guys try to get more stable, they spread their base out. It's called a sprawl. So that's exactly what Hans did in designing this boat is he made it to where as it comes back, it gets wider. And there's two reasons for that other than just your common sense stability. A bow mount motor makes a boat raise up in the front because it pulls the boat. When it raises the boat up, the back end gets more in the water. That's called wetted surface increases the coefficient of friction, which is a fancy word for drag, and makes the boat slower, and it makes the motor work harder. Same thing with a stern mount. Since a stern mount pushes, if you ever ever seen a bass boat take off, they take off like this, and they break over and get up on plane. Well, fishing kayaks don't do that, so you have to design a planing hull. So 
whether you put a Torquedo, a Newport vessel, a tiller handle motor, this boat's not going to squat in the back because Hans made it wide enough and he made the tunnel shallow so it's a planing hole, not a displacement hole like all previous models of bonafide kayaks on most of the boats out there. So whether you're going to bow mount it, stern mount it, you got plenty of volume for your batteries. Uh, one configuration that I can see is going to be really popular is putting your battery in the back, using these power link plates to run your power to the front to a bow mount motor and then scoot your seat all the way forward to where you don't even need to use the steering system because you're going to be using your motor for steering. So I can see this as like the ultimate spider rigging rig for crappy fishermen or I can see this as a big cat, cat fishing, big game fishing deal. And as a bass fisherman, people forget that I spent a lot of time and I actually started my career in saltwater. So I can also see this thing as a massive platform, put this polling deck in the back, pull from the back, add a second deck, take this seat completely out, throw a cooler in it. There's plenty of stability for pulling from a cooler, pulling from the back, pulling from the front, and it's just an all around versatile platform. One thing that you're gonna see a lot in social media is this question. Well, is it a kayak or is it a boat? You know what, every kayak is actually a boat. If you paddle something, if you propel it with a motor, or if you propel it with pedals, it's a boat. So every kayak you paddle, pedal, or power is a boat. So the answer to that question is yes, it's a boat. So it's a small boat or a big kayak. You can decide what you want to call it. So Just, well, uh, on that topic, I see paddles here. So yes. I've seen comments. <laughs> Comments, oh, you mean the comments from the internet experts that know how well it paddles yes. just from looking oh, at it? Those guys. Yes. Yeah, those guys. So I put the Strava app up on a, a boat holder, right. and I put this thing on the lake, and I was paddling it with a standard kayak paddle. Didn't have a bunch of crap in it, yeah. but with a standard kayak paddle with a bow mount and stern mount motor on it, both raised up out of the water. I was doing 3-2 with a standard paddle stroke. I bumped it up, got a little brisker doing 3-8, and then I wanted to see how fast I could go, and I got up to about 4-2. So 4.2 was the fastest I got it, and I was only using a 250 centimeter paddle. I wasn't using some big wide paddle because again, if you look at the way the boat's designed, Hans brought the deck down. He also angled this here so that it makes it easy for your paddle to go by without having a paddle that's gotta be you know, 280 centimeters. So I was paddling this thing with a 250 centimeter bend in branches, Angler Pro Carbon, and again, I was getting speeds comparable to what I get in the PWR. Right. which is designed for paddling. And so again, for all the naysayers out there, this is actually a boat you really can paddle. Yes. Game changer for sure. I love the design. It's on my list. All right, it's on good. my list. Well, thanks for having me, man. Hey, I appreciate it. And, thank uh, you for what you do for kayak. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate and your that. Your blessing. God bless you, man. Thank, thank, you. thank you. And if you guys have any interest in finding out more about it than what I said, head over to my YouTube channel. I've got a, a great full walkthrough video with oh, yeah. Hans, who provides some insight. Or head over to bonafidekayaks.com, and they've got all the specs and details. And it's twenty-eight hundred dollars retail. Um, 150 pounds with no seat, 165 pounds with the seat. All I right. think that covers all the specs. Cool. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate Dang. it.